Right, uh, let me, let's move to Timothy, uh, and I want to ask you two questions, I guess. One is, Microsoft will not be the only player in this area, will it? I, Google has got to, isn't going to sit down and, and cede this, this area to, to Microsoft. And then the other thing is, place this uh, chat GPT and AI in the, in the broader context of what's next in the world of computing. Uh, I see you say this is going to be as important as the internet. Last time I heard that, it was that the blockchain was going to be as important as the internet. Um, talk to me a little bit about those ideas. Uh, great questions. Uh, well, you need, first off, you need a hyperscale, massive cloud infrastructure to do AI. And there's really only three companies that have that, uh, Google, Microsoft, Azure, and, uh, and AWS. It takes massive amounts of bandwidth, massive amounts of compute. And this is only going to accelerate at, at this point. And uh, great question on how important AI is going to be. I mean, it remains to be seen, but we think it's going to basically be embedded in every single application, every single technology, um, and it will be extremely transformative. So does that uh, quell your doubts? Uh, uh, well, I, I, yeah, <laughs> no, I think that's I think that's kind of what I expected uh, Timothy to say was that it's going to be everywhere. It is ubiquitous. It right. is going to be something that you're you're not even going to be conscious of. Right. It's under the hood, Tyler. And, yeah. and to, the, to the cloud point right there. Also, Google and their announcement yesterday. We already knew this was a complicated and expensive thing to run in the cloud servers. Google, without getting too technical, has figured out a way to do that cheaper. And so that's kind of what they're highlighting here too. Whereas we heard from Sam Altman, who's behind OpenAI uh, and ChatGPT say, you know, every time you put in a query, it costs us like three or four cents. Right. Google is claiming, well, we can do that for much cheaper and a much more efficient cost, therefore making it more enticing for people to get into I'm that I'm still technology. trying to wrap my head around the love seat and whether it's gonna fit yeah. in my car. I tried, Type it into Bing, I, I know. did, I typed it into Bing in Chrome and I just got kind of generic, nothing to the- You thing. might, it might not be activated yeah. yet. And they then I said tried, it's coming today. But I, I did try it in Edge just to make sure that that wasn't the- you're the only sauce. person in this building using Edge. I can yeah, guarantee so you that. I'm looking at. The, I don't think. I, I don't think this is yet uh, widely deployed. Right. But uh, of course, we're all eager to check it out. We've, as I've said, we, I've used ChatGPT. Once you use it, you have it make a, po a poem for you. You'll you'll never be the same. Um, if they all have the same, you know. So again, if if Microsoft can make being useful in that sense, if Google has technology that's as good, fine. But let's see. Not, and not just as good, Kelly. The foundational technology, what's called a transformer, I told you this last hour, was developed by Google in an open source way. What OpenAI did was take that technology, expand on it, sell it to Microsoft, get that investment from Microsoft, and now it's being embedded into these Microsoft products, whereas Google's taking everything so that's, that's homegrown and just doing it themselves. That's why they were able to turn around at a dime and push out their products.